Greetings once again, this is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. My talk today focuses on, uh, there's a Tesla executive who has a lot of Stanford ties, so he did a talk in the engineering department, and I'll attach his talk, but I thought that uh, a couple of three points that he made were pretty critical, particularly when it came to the battery issues of Tesla, and I thought he might tease out some of the uh, conclusions he shared and review them in terms of the implications, particularly when it comes to trucks. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Uh, the ESP station of Himal Fiber, Finan, J. Nihal Ma. So there's an executive named Mr. Jeff at Tesla. Um, very unusual background, engineering uh, and art degree from Oregon State. And as you'll see in the video, it kind of goes through a number of aspects of Tesla that are, I want to say, not well known. Um, there are a few sort of data points that I thought were, maybe three data points that I thought were really interesting that I was unaware of. Uh, one data point that I was stunned by is as of, I guess, two and a half years ago and still now, the roadster of Tesla goes 247 miles. And that remains uh, the only competition for Tesla relative to miles or distance for the vehicle is uh, the Roadster, which came out, uh, I guess, in 2006. That's mind blowing uh, that uh, there's been that much time and competitors haven't closed the gap since or in that period. And uh, I think it's a sign of the fact that there's a big discussion of competitors coming after Tesla and what they're going to do, but they slept and caught up with a car that's uh, 10 years, 11 years old. Um, the second point that I thought was fascinating uh, in his talk was the fact that um, he had a dialogue about uh, the cost of batteries. Um, one of his points was that the, the battery pack is 7,000 uh, 18650 lithium-ion batteries that are made by Panasonic under Tesla guidance. Um, they put 7,000 of them in the Model S, and I would assume about the same in the Model X. And uh, the battery pack actually cost $35,000. So I thought this was kind of an interesting number because you can then start building out, you know, they have a 25% margin on the car, so you can sort of use that as a guidepost for figuring out what all the costs of the car build are, you know, and how the numbers come together. Um, this is also kind of interesting because it rolls into a discussion about, um, he talked at length about sort of batteries and lithium ion and price changes over time. But one of the most fascinating data points that he presented was he, he highlighted that with all batteries, especially lithium ion batteries, the battery prefers to operate in the range of 20% to 70%. What he suggested is that if you keep your battery in this range, you're optimized for potential um, degradation or, or loss of, of uh, cells uh, over time. And I thought this was interesting because I hadn't heard this before. There's a gentleman named Hans who, who I think was one of my viewers, uh, and he, Hans pointed out that uh, um, when you're at the supercharger, you know, there's a, um, there's a rapid charge up to about 50%, and then after that, it starts slowing down, particularly after 70%, um, as it continues to go. And at the top end, um, it, it is slowing down so that the gel and the cooling system can uh, cool down the, the, the cells so that they're not damaged uh, by the supercharger process. So I just thought it was fascinating to um, learn that there was this phenomenon of um, an ideal temperature range. So I was sort of kicking ideas around with a buddy of mine and I decided today to do something a little bit different than we usually do in our conversations. And what that is, is that um, I have a good friend of mine, his name is Lyman, he has a PhD originally at, at MIT, but he finished up at Georgia Tech. And so we've been having these debates about Tesla and what's going on. So 
I wanted to today have a little bit of fun with it by putting a hat on when it's him speaking versus me speaking to him. I'll pull my hat off and you'll see how the discussion goes. So my statement to him was I was asking him, well, what do you think about the fact that, you know, this guy talked about the 2070 range? And, um, well, to be honest with you, there is some truth to that that there is a 2070 range. Uh, it turns out that if you allow a battery to be drained and sit in that low range, i.e. almost empty or empty, um, the cells will actually develop memory at no charge. So once it does that, they no longer are able to start developing the ability to once again charge themselves if you allow that no memory to occur. So I was like, wow, that's interesting. I didn't, I didn't realize that. As Mr. Duff had pointed out, the damage to your battery can be as much from charging, discharging completely as charging all the time, all the way to the top. Lyman. Now, this is, there's one thing you should be aware of, and that is that all batteries um, uh, are consumables, so they will die after a certain amount of time. So the fact of the matter is, if you're able to um, slow degradation a little bit over the, you know, the life of your use of that vehicle, that's nice, but it's not like the battery is gonna last forever. There's a useful life cycle. That's a good point, but if I owned the car, number one, I would definitely want the battery to last as much as possible uh, for me, number one, and number two, I think the more life there is left in the battery, even if I sold the car, I still have uh, a lot of value there that's driven by it being recognized that I was you know, cautious in my battery management of this vehicle. That's ridiculous. Um, you got to recognize the fact that um, this is a consumable and just respect the fact that it's a consumable. And so, don't let it charge down to zero, but don't worry about it. Just charge it, use it. Once it's uh, through its useful life, <clears throat> you just get rid of it. I was like, okay, I'll concede the point. Um, the one other item that I was wondering about is, <coughs> what about the fact that the Tesla Semi is about to come out? And in the case of the, the batteries, there's a whole bunch of data out there that suggests that, for example, there are people that at 50,000 miles have lost 6 to 10% of their battery life. So if you imp impute that to how many miles that battery might go, in theory, you know, let's say it's 500,000, you're now down to 45% or less. So it's not even making economic sense to keep the battery. You probably want to get rid of it. And so when it comes to trucks, trucks will actually go three, you know, 500,000 miles in a year. So if you're losing 6% um, at 50,000 miles, and then you keep doing that, in theory, that's about 50 grand a month. And so that battery is almost not worth charging after the first year, year and a half of ownership. And it's 50% more expensive than a truck, conventional truck, even though you do get the pollution, the lower cost of everything benefits uh, from that. Um, here's where uh, things are not as they appear. What you should be aware of is that uh, somewhere in the range of one to five percent of the batteries of, of the battery capacity can be increased. And what you can do is allow, you know, once a day, once every other day, you can, in a rolling fashion, uh, have more sort of batteries than you need and bring them into use on a limited basis to give relief to the batteries that are being most often used in the pack. And what this does is allows you to reduce uh, the amount of damage seen by routine charging or supercharging 
could allow the vehicles to go those long distances. It may not be appropriate with cars, but by doing so, you lose, you gain weight because you're lo and lose a little bit of cargo you might be able to carry. But now those batteries are able to go for those longer distances without a major, uh, you know, losing um, cells in large amounts very quickly and therefore rendering those batteries useless. So I was like, wow, I didn't realize. Uh, so after talking with him about this, I actually didn't realize that there was that option where by cycling in batteries that are not being, that are not sort of part of the main pack, you can have a way to give relief to those batteries and uh, to all of the batteries on a systematic basis allowing them, therefore, to uh, regenerate themselves. So I thought this was pretty fascinating and educational, both from the depth perspective and my buddy Lyman's perspective. Um, you know, the truck is a major iteration, I think, perhaps more important than cars. When you look at pollution and the impact on the costs, et cetera, et cetera, I think it's the most important application out there. So. Uh, I'll look forward to your comments on this, um, and I don't think it's going to be covered very much at the news introduction because everybody will be enamored with just looking at the truck, etc. But I think it's important to note that there are ways to manage the damage impact of heavy use of batteries that allow um, it to get a you know three to five year useful life. Thanks uh, for taking time out. Uh, your, your viewing of ads as well as Patreon support helps us to uh, keep improving execution. This is very for Tesla Fan Insight. Tschüss, macht's gut, au revoir, à tout à l'heure, la vie pour la route, Hoda Hafez, have a great day.